5 TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everybody, to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Do I have anything there? Didn't hear it. There we go. Slow on the uptake today. A little slow. Uh, what do we have going on? We're up one and a half, and that's one point. Five points on the S&P cash, 24 on the Dow, NASDAQ, up 27. There's just no, no volume markets hanging out here. I think I have a reason for it. We didn't find out until after I got off, uh, off the show last night, sitting in for Tom O'Brien. But they certainly made it rather quiet. Doing about 3.6 billion shares as we start the show on the CBOE consolidated volume tape, maybe 3.7 in that area. Uh, it was very tough to get any kind of decent volume yesterday. It looks like it's not going to be any better today. One of the things that is different is we're not seeing any kind of volume at the close like we have. That started to taper over the last week. It's telling you that something is changing. We don't know quite what it is yet. I have a theory, though. We're going to explain that theory. And it starts with something like this that we went through a little while ago. Uh, what was it, a week and a half ago? Two weeks? And that is uh, the IPOs come and they suck all the oxygen out of the room. Well, we've got a couple more that are priced. Uh, Pinterest and Zoom video. Uh, together, these almost make up as much money that's going to get sucked in to new companies as Lyft. They're holding the market up, but at the same time, uh, there's a difference when new money comes in to replace it, or they just sell what they've got to uh, actually get, uh, oh, uh, to get uh, more money to buy new things. So sometimes they just have a lot of cash, I don't think they've got it now. The market just seems very tired. They will step in anytime the market looks like a little pullback's coming. But again, volume incessantly quiet. Uh, and it also, uh, you just see in some of these stocks that have tended to be uh, fairly shorted slowly, I mean, painfully slowly moving higher today. And, you know, so you get a little bounce out of some of these and you, maybe you make a little money if you're day trading them. But, man, the, I it, everything to me just spells of danger. So close to a previous high, you'd think you were going to get there. The problem is at this rate, we probably will n will not make it. Maybe, maybe we will. Maybe we'll get some good news. Now, of course, uh, this is in the backdrop of earnings, which are now coming out. Uh, we had, uh, what, I'm going to call it four major earnings announcements over the last, well, since the close last night. After the bell last night, we had J.B. Hunt. We'll look at that. It's off about 4.5%. Citigroup up 2.5%. J&J up 2% uh, after being, um, eh, not much of a range in her day. I think it was a little lower uh, pre-market. And BlackRock, which is uh, was flat going into it. And I think there's some shorts in that uh, getting uh, moved up. But you normally need even just a break even on options, about a 5 or 6% uh, move on the stock. And what we've got is a lot of 2 and 3 and 4% maybe, but nothing that would say that it's worth anywhere close to the risk reward uh, for or even making money. Now, J.B. Hunt, probably the worst offender today. And, of course, as always, the worst offender gets the losing horn. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, seeing notes instead of usual slide. No issue for now, but future. I don't know. Oh, I see what he was talking about here. Yeah, there we go. Got that cleaned up. Okay, so what else do we have? It is uh, just that, just light volume. Uh, we're not able to push higher. In fact, we may even go uh, south on the day in the S&P cash. And if you can't really push into a weekend like this, that tells you something too. But I think if we're work, talking about working theories, it is that we've got about $2 billion that has to be sucked out this week to buy new IPOs. I'm not really sold on jumping in on Pinterest uh, and or Zoom. Zoom, I, I know less about. I'll, I'll find out more about it this week. But uh, pricing tonight, probably, on Pinterest, maybe they roll out uh, tomorrow morning and or maybe on Thursday morning. Um, haven't seen a lot of reporting about it. They're trying to keep it kind of quiet, mostly because of the downside on that. I think they were originally uh, trying to uh, come out and raise about $5 billion uh, and about a billion and a half for it, and I think about half a billion for Zoom. But uh, $2 billion, maybe $2.1 billion. There's a whole bunch of also RANs that maybe run that up to $2.5 billion, a bunch of smaller companies. So is some money coming out? Most of these are sliver deals. That means that they couldn't find a home for all those shares now. So what they'll do is they'll push a lot of a, a, a very thin market higher, and eventually they'll continue to dole those shares out and uh, dilute uh, investors. So generally not a good deal uh, any time on those. But uh, that's kind of it. Now we're going to go into probably even lighter volume uh, after tomorrow's close because that's really when most of the action is going to happen for expiration, which is really on Thursday. But, well, what can you say? The people of Wall Street, they see three days, they want four. They see four days, they want five. Maybe that's why they're in the business that they're in. So they're going to probably try to do a great deal of what they can tomorrow. So if we're going to get any action in this market, I think it's going to be tomorrow. Maybe the uh, market's kind of rolling south here a little bit, uh, or that they've got the, uh, the pricing done. They'll announce it after the bell tonight, so we'll look for that. And, of course, after the bell tonight, uh, we also have more earnings with Netflix and IBM and uh, CSX, uh, United Continental, Interactive Brokers. Uh, and then, of course, we go tomorrow morning for Morgan Stanley, PepsiCo, Abbott Laboratories, Bank of New York Mellon, Erickson. Get a good read on what 5G is doing. Kansas City Southern. Textron. Anything else? No, that's about it. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this day in 1977, David Soul's smash hit, Don't Give Up On Us Baby, reaches the top of the U.S. pop charts with the story of the tough but sensitive TV detective who's trying to cross over began 10 years earlier when he started out as a singer, but he was just too good looking and no one would pay attention to what he sang. So he became a actor so that he could become a singer. Of course, uh, on uh, Starsky and Hutch. And, of course, uh, he won, I think, a Grammy. And uh, that was the start, I think, that 1978, uh, of the puffy shirt. Fast forward about 25 years. One of the greatest episodes of Seinfeld of all time, the puffy shirt episode. But it actually goes to the puffy shirt from David Soul. And I think the episode was actually even called something soul as a, a nod to David's soul. Uh, <laughs> one of David's favorite top. No, 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 no. I didn't. Wasn't, wasn't one, one of my songs. In fact, I think that's when I just started really getting into Pink Floyd. Didn't listen to it when I was 13. I think I was about 17 or 18 and really started to like Pink Floyd when I was about 21. Uh, certainly, he had, uh, it was something that grew on me in time. Uh, but no, I didn't listen to anything like the drivel and the uh, of David Soul's song. And uh, eh, what can you say about it? It seemed like everybody had to sing, whether it was Spock or Captain Kirk. Everybody had an album. Everybody thought that they could sing. But uh, eh, I think few people can. Now, of course, everybody can because of auto-tune and... Uh, you just never know what you're going to bring up by doing all that stuff. Uh, we're going to go into charts fairly quickly today because I looked, had a big, uh, uh, where is that at? Had a big uh, uh, update this morning where I went through a lot of these uh, and showed them off. But I don't think that we've got any kind of signal just yet. But certainly... Um, we have to worry about the way that this market's starting to actually um, act into this incredibly light volume. Now, maybe it doesn't go down. Maybe all we do is go sideways for a while until people wait. But I don't think we've got any kind of 
a really uh, what is going on here? We don't have any real. How can I say it? We don't have any real juice in the market. Anyway, uh, we've got some emails. We'll go to those first, and then we'll get into a lot of other stuff. So UUP, I think, is the first question we've got out for the day. And this is the U.S. Uh, dollar bullish index fund. Uh, I don't think the dollar's going anyway. I think we're horribly range-bound. And I don't see any reason until it breaks out one way or the other uh, to actually get involved in this. Um, I think this thing can just bounce around, especially with the Treasury, the President, and the Fed all looking to game the dollar and keep it around in this area. We'll look and see what we've got on the dollar index itself. I Just everything, it seems to me, I'm seeing a huge amount of effort uh, from uh, the government to keep it below 97 and above about 95.50. That's kind of where they're doing it until that busts out and proves that the government no longer can keep it there. Uh, that'd be it. But I am neither fish nor fowl today uh, by uh, making sure that uh, I just stay away from this because I don't think that there's much there there. And, of course, you want to look at that in the context of the TLT. It kind of the exact same thing. Everybody was sure uh, Mr. TLT. Oh. Uh, oh, that's why I know I was not doing that. Um, Mr. TLT. Oh, t we'll do the TLT again here. Mr. TLT uh, is, you know, had a false breakout to the upside. Now kind of down a little bit, but I just don't continue to see a lot of reasons uh, to get involved in that. Kind of like getting involved in a land war uh, in Asia. Just uh, some things that you do not want to do. Uh, and uh, I've got to get something else up and running here. Uh, is this right? I think it is. Let me get this going here. Hang on a second. Uh, okay. So that's the first thing. Oh, now let's go ahead and get back to the other email. This, I'm just saying stay away. I don't see much. The other email that we already have, and you can, of course, always uh, email me at path at tfnn.com, uh, is Humana. Uh, health start, uh, health, healthcare stocks are taking a beating. I know there's political chatter around the healthcare, but there always is. It may be approaching a Swing low from uh, Q1 2017, earnings on May 1st. What are your thoughts on these healthcare stocks? Um, man, if I believe anything from the Soviets uh, running for president, and yes, I did not mince words there. Uh, if you are actually sound like a edition of Pravda circa 1965, then maybe you're a Soviet. We'll make a little fun of those guys. But from uh, calling from uh, socialized, uh, or in my case, Soviet healthcare, um, I always find it amazing of horribly ill informed people who tell me how great healthcare uh, is down in Cuba. And the one thing they forget to tell you is that you have to pay for all the medicine yourself. They will do anything to you, but you better drag everything there that you need. And, um, but it's free. It's free, but guess what? They got zero things to help you with. They'll they'll stand there and look at you all day long. But man, if it actually takes anything like an aspirin, you better drag it along with you because they don't do anything for you. I've been to uh, socialized health care facilities in both in England and in Canada. I can tell you that everybody that has a dime goes and finds somebody that's actually decent. And I know no one likes to hear it, uh, but uh, there's one thing that's for sure, and that is capitalism is the only thing that's dragged people out of the muck and the mire. Uh, every time they've gone to socialism, it's only been millions of dead in huge and bigger wars. So the history of socialism is horrible. Uh, but at the same time, if you're trading stocks, what do you got to look forward to? 
Um, you got 20 people running for president. Of that, about 15 of them uh, are going to try out, do every other person in there going to the far left. And that's all you're going to hear about. And certainly you're not going to get anything through Congress, uh, for uh, at least positive for uh, health care and health care providers. So I don't know if there's a lot to do out there other than that. Uh, yeah, bring your own scalpels, Band-Aids. Uh, I don't understand. Like I said, just truly uninformed people. But guess what? There is that socialist Soviet wave rolling through the ill-informed. And you've got to worry about it if you're going to invest. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we said, we're going to get to charts pretty quick as soon as I get off my sock box and we get into looking at charts. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, I had kind of a big update. I was looking at handful of these we'll try to get through as many as we can but again not going to get to them all but that's why i have a newsletter uh aecom technology acm uh last high was february 5th 32 dollars with 1.9 million shares yesterday 722,000 today 244,000 as we go slightly higher uh 32 dollars uh, 52 cents and again, we're going to get close to closing below 
probably in the next few days. Um, one of the things that does happen uh, in a market like this where the advanced decline line was not as good as one would think yesterday, uh, certainly is that the summation index has turned down too. I won't show charts on that. Uh, but the uh, surprises come in the direction of that summation index. So what we should be looking for are downside surprises right now. Autodesk continues to creep higher on very little volume. There's no real signal, uh, significant signal. Let me go back here a little bit farther. Um, you've got this high that you broke through uh, going back to what is that? The uh, first of March. Uh, that had 3.8 million shares. You basically, what, uh, five days ago, 1.5 million shares, 1.4. Yesterday, 980,000 shares. Today, 869,000 shares. You can get a little more, but certainly you're not going to get anything close to that down candle. You would have liked to have seen at least some uh, sign of uh, strength. The closest thing you got to that was on April 1st when you had 4 million shares, but you didn't break that high. So you kind of tied, but that's not a great signal. It's just one that says you're probably going to go uh, a little bit farther. Um, let's do some of the other ones out here. AMC Entertainment. Uh, I think I, in the den yesterday, I posted uh, an article about the first half of this year, maybe the worst in 10 years for the movie theaters. I think a lot of people were actually, maybe it was today, uh, a lot of people were discussing in the den during the 10 o'clock hour uh, that uh, what's going on in the movies and Amazon and Netflix and all that stuff with Netflix after the bell tonight. Uh, but certainly you just don't have a lot in that movie theater business. They've tried to get people to come along uh, with uh, dinners and all kinds of uh, ideas to spend more money at the theater, uh, but uh, didn't have done much with it. AMC, March 1st high was $16.50 on earnings, spiked up there with 10 million shares, spiked it again on April 8th with uh, 3.62 million shares. Today, you're up with about a million shares back into that. I don't think anything changes. I look forward uh, to the movie uh, schedule on Variety, and I didn't see anything out there that actually said anything's probably going to get any better. Yeah, that would make, oh, we don't want to make movies. We, we What they want to make is roller coasters. Those roller coasters come out in the summer. Everybody goes, sees them, and that's it. But the rest of the time, everything's empty, and that's not going to work for the movies long term. Uh, Nautilus uh, Medical Incorporated, um, this thing keeps coming down on very light volume in that high 20, uh, $24 range. Um, just no juice to the downside. Not too many stocks can actually say that. Most are failing at the highs. Benchmark Electronics, BHE, uh, going into a 600,000, 650,000 share spike uh, that goes back to February 8th. That was at 29.17. We're up to 29.81 today with 136,000 shares. Now, that doesn't mean to pull the trigger now. But once these IPOs come out, once we go into Thursday, if the volume is so absolutely pathetic, you either want to take uh, a short on Thursday's close or you want to wait till Monday and see whether or not you get a better position if something changes. But uh, incredibly, incredibly thin and brittle markets are around us. Brady, as we talked about this one yesterday, uh, was up on light volume into the previous high. Still no word on whether or not they show all the people's faces in various blocks looking up and down for the Brady Bunch, BRC. February 21st, $48.62, 640,000 shares. So what have we had over here on the right-hand side of the chart? A whole lot of nothing. Two days ago, 164,000 shares. Uh, yesterday, 151,000 shares. Today, 74,000 shares. Caterpillar. Uh, trying to break out from highs. Again, not a lot of juice. The first one we see is the December 3rd high at 
41 with uh, 9.4 million shares. Tested again on February 25th, 142.55 with 4.4 million shares. Now you got to spike into it yesterday with 3 million shares. Today we're doing 1.6 million shares as it pushes, or 1.7 million shares as it pushes higher. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, or you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, let's see what else we have here that I want to go look at. Seco, um, not a big fan of for pay education, uh, but I certainly wouldn't be shorting a $17 stock, but certainly wouldn't be long this one either. Uh, it uh, jumped up on to, to February 21st, and that had uh, 1.6 million shares up to 1772, got to 1803 two days ago with 642,000 shares. Yesterday, 355,000 shares. Today, 250,000 shares so far. So hanging up there uh, in pretty rarefied air, as most of these are. Cabot oil and gas, as I said the last few days, I think we've seen a high in crude. We'll be looking forward to the numbers tomorrow. Um, doesn't mean we instantly roll over. Up 64 cents to the day on crude itself. Uh, to, 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 okay. And what do we have? Cabot oil and gas, $27.40. That was uh, with 12 million shares on November 14th. Got into it a few days ago with 3.5 million shares. Up today on two and a half million shares. So again, uh, lot and two on the power law vector indicators. If you're not wa if you're watching on Tiger TV or looking through my update this morning in, in the newsletter, the February eighth low up to these discs had nothing. I mean, uh, very very light. Now we have a pop in Cirrus Logic today. We've been talking about that one for a while. Now, this gets you back up into the uh, pop of March 12th. Uh, actually, it looks a little bit better than you than I had been looking about. Uh, you wanted about 800,000 shares from the August 28th high. You're going through that, of course, with probably about the same volume you're getting from that March 12th high. Uh, but uh, again, just very light. And now you're going in this huge candle with 2.7 million shares on the way down of the 2nd of February. We'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We have a question from the den and that is uh, taking a look at quiet riot blockchain it's not the real name it's just that all i can think of it, every time i see riot blockchain is quiet riot and that guy with the horrible hair that sings we are not gonna take it what was his name d something d something anyway uh, now if you look at the chart go back here a little bit farther you did make a low. Uh, you did make it with hit more volume down here on one, uh, buck twenty nine. Uh, but guess what? Everybody in this dog was short this thing, and of course now it's going back up. Um, they can't short it under five bucks, and that's exactly where you're at. If you got into this for a play, and I'm not very bullish in the entire market. In fact, let's take. Uh, do I have it? I don't have it. Um, if you do take a look at this, here's the play. That is anything above five bucks and people are gonna start shorting it a bore. So you've got instant supply line above five bucks because a lot of people believe this thing's going to zero again. So what you could have, you've got two nice big gaps. You could get a third, but if you got a third, I would instantly sell it. I mean, within 10 seconds of this thing opening up on a gap higher, I would be out of it. Uh, if you're trying to, if it tries to chew its way through that $5 level, you're probably never, ever going to get it. You're going to have to make your money on the gap and sell the gap almost instantaneously. Because my guess is everybody and their dog will be all over to short this one. Um, I do not have the short data on it now. Uh, Skyworks Solution, S W K S. Uh, do I think it's going to run to 115 before uh, pulling back? Um, I actually was looking at this and some of the other ones out here as incredibly weak stocks. It's not as bad as some, but man, I hate the volume right now. November 1st, you had $89.51 on 1.85 million shares today. You're getting into that with 700,000 shares. Now, volume doesn't instantly um turn a stock but man you're in some extremely thin and rarefied air for these i do not like basically being long at any point or gesture even if it there's an 80 percent chance that we go up maybe another 20 points but there's a probably 20 percent chance that we go down a couple of uh days and we find ourselves down 100 points on the S&P cash. Now, it's probably going to be next week. We're probably going to just eke out uh, a move higher into Thursday. But if we don't get some kind of catalyst to move this market higher, I think a lot of people are going to get tired of waiting for the trade deal that probably will not come till next spring, my guess. Uh, and everybody will just be uh, hanging out. But I have a feeling that we're sucking out the last of the cash with these IPOs. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of movement up with any kind of gusto. And again, we'll go through a bunch of other stocks before the end of the day. But 
Um, I'm nervous. Uh, I can't say that you that there's a signal to short, uh, but man, a lot of these stocks just look like screaming shorts out there today. Only a couple of them look fairly good at the lows. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, I don't know what this thing is. We'll move on. CVI. Okay. Uh, CVR Energy, uh, banging around $45. The spike on May 22nd came with $45.02 in last year. Uh, tried to get into it on October 20, uh, yeah, October 31st and didn't quite make it last fall. Uh, and we got a little pop in here with 335,000 shares a couple of days ago. So about half volume. Again, the energy wasn't anything exciting off that. December 24th low, it's been kind of light for a while. ENTG, I think we looked at this one yesterday too. Integris, um, they just make stuff up these days. I don't think that there's much else out there. We've got Todd in Colorado. How you doing, Todd? Doing fine, Dave. How are you this morning? Another day in, afternoon for you. in paradise. I got all the doors open. This is, uh, it's been <laughs> kind of like a cold, and, or nasty, uh, uh, I wouldn't even call it spring. It's our winter down here. But it normally, you know, you've got a lot of days where I can get out to the pool and everything. It's been very hit and miss this year. This, you know, there's been a few nice days, but it hadn't been that 90 days of perfect weather. Today, this is the uh, this is what you want for the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce for Clearwater. Uh, to be out there because there, <laughs> it can't be any better and more perfect. And I try to get out and walk the dogs every chance I get today. But uh, we're calling about U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel, yeah, it's been beaten up. And, you know, you made the comment yesterday about uh, the world's economies are, did you say, roaring right now? They're doing and good. I was just wondering but, how to capitalize on that. And so I was thinking about U.S. Steel. All these bets, I think there was somebody else that called on a steel company a week ago, and I said the same thing. I think it got hammered over the last few days. That is that these will run if you get a trade deal, right? But if you don't, okay. it's going to be tough. You, in fact, playing one of these steel plays. I think I told him the same thing, which is you have to look at these as non-expiring options, which means you get in these things and you go, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to buy 100 shares of these things where I'd normally buy 1,000, and I'm just going to sit on it like an option, and one day the thing's going to run. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to time the news exactly. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. But you, you, know, you have to look at these as non-expiring options, which means that you put in a little money, not a whole lot, and you just sit on them uh, until you get the big pop. But I, to tell you the truth, I don't see anything in the charts right now. And that's I, I keep on saying that I think this is the, everybody's waiting for the trade deal. And that trade deal will come, but it's not going to be easy with the Chinese. They think in terms of 20 and 50 years. We, yeah. we think in terms of next week, they're in no hurry to mm -hmm. do damn anything. I've been over there. <laughs> I know two things. They're the biggest racists in the world. They hate everybody. And if they can, if they believe it is their destiny to take your money, whoever it is, their next door neighbors, you know, not steal it, but if they can kind of, you know, Put some radioactive waste in your dog food uh, to kind of make it, you know, a few extra dollars. It may, no real problem with them. Uh, let me put it this way. They've got a real problem with ethics. And they don't have any problem. I mean, the Japanese hate the Chinese. The Chinese hate the, the Koreans. The Koreans hate the Japanese. It's a, it's a tough thing. Anyway, let's feel the noise, huh? We're going to break. We'll be back in a minute. Hopefully, you can hang on. We'll talk more about steel.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, we're back. I'm having a little fun in the den, talking as we're waiting for the market to actually do something that we can jump up and scream about, talking about formaldehyde up two and a half points on the S&P cash and uh, 77 on the Dow, a little bit of juice there, and uh, back to 30 on the NASDAQ. Russell's up five. So we got, uh, well, let's check out the volume here real quickly. We still, oh, he's still on. Todd, you still there? I am. Okay. So what else are you thinking on steel here? I, 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 I like it, but again, it's all about timing on this. And the question is, when's that going to come? And I don't think you're going to know. I mean, we've cried woof a hundred times on how things are going well. So other than them saying I'm signing a deal, and if you can catch that during the trading uh, business, I, I think there's probably a nice run coming after it. But I, I don't know. The risk reward just doesn't sound good to me unless you decide that you can get in at the right time, which is the announcement of that trade deal. Right. Right. So, well, is there a uh, company other than U.S. Steel you like better? Yeah, I mean, like Whirlpool, anybody that makes uh, white goods here in the United States, because generally that trade deal looks like it's going to. Um, be very tough on 
those. So Whirlpool, any of those others. But again, you got to wait until that trade deal is actually signed. Now, another thing would be if the trade deal doesn't get signed, then the tariff's going to hit and U.S. Steel probably going to move up two, three bucks, I would imagine, uh, within a day or two, if that happens too. So I, it's not that I totally hate the trade. It's just that you're waiting for something to happen, either to get signed gotcha. or not get signed. We're going uh, to the end of the show here already. Huh. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.